Good morning YouTube and welcome back to Fern Valley Farms beekeeping channel. If you're new to the channel my name is Vince. If you came to see beekeeping videos this is the channel to come to so hit the subscribe button right there. Once you subscribe to the channel hit the little bell you'll get notified every time one of these videos come out. Okay I really don't want to talk about fall. <laughs> it's only it's almost the end of July here. Um, I really don't want to talk about fall but what I'm doing is I'm finished I'm adding two more pollen substitute feeders to my little stand here. I've got four. I've got four right now. I'm going to put two more on so I'll have six. This way there's plenty of room for the bees. There's not going to be any fighting and killing. We hate to lose bees and we don't need fighting. So I have four of them. Uh, there's nothing in them right now. They work great for bird nests actually. And there's really, I'm really surprised there's no birds in there right now. Last year I had birds in there. Even when there was pollen sub in there I had some birds. But right now, there's no pollen sub in there. There's really not. A, a, there's really no neat reason for it in my area, anyways. Um, but we're, we're getting close now. I mean, we're not in a dearth yet, but pretty soon things are going to start dying off and things are going to start getting dry. It's coming. There's still some. There's still some clover blooming, and some of the wildflowers are blooming. We're still doing okay. Uh, supers get pulled off in about three, maybe four weeks, the, the longest, and we'll be done. But you want to feed your bees some pollen substitute. That's what I do. I'm trying to say you have to. That's just what I do. I, and a lot of people do it. Uh, I like to feed them pollen sub. And the way you'll know if they need the pollen sub is when they're in it. You can fill that thing up right now, and there won't, if they don't need it, there won't be a single bee there. But if you fill that up and you come back tomorrow, the next day, whatever, there's bees all over it, that means there's nothing else out here, and they're going to the pollen sub. And you can see where I have this. I hate that squeak here. All my hives are way over there, and I keep this right here. So it's basically in a straight shot to the hives, and they find it. It's amazing how they can find this stuff. So like I said, if I put this in now and they don't touch it, that means there's plenty of stuff out here. A uh, week, two weeks can go by, they won't touch it. But if you come out here one day and there's bees all over it, that means they're looking for pollen. They're looking for pollen because things are drying up. Once the goldenrod kicks in, they'll probably back off of that. But I'm not even going to put any pollen sub in it right now. I'm going to leave it empty. I'm just getting this lab. I'm going to put two more of these up, and then I'm done. I want to show you really quick how you make these. I did a video on this a year or so ago. These are so simple to make. All this is, you can go, I get this at Menards. All this is a sewer pipe. You could buy these little, okay, now it's not going to come off, but this is a, a two-foot piece of sewer pipe. It's like $6. You buy the salad cap for one end. And you buy the other cap, then cap for this end, put it together, you're done. I'll turn it, generally I'll turn it, I usually I'll turn it this way, it really doesn't matter. They're, they're pointing down now, it really doesn't matter which way you face it, this way or this way. <coughs> oh, excuse me, but they, they'll go in it obviously, I just, I just face it this way, you know. But I built two more of these, so I'll have six, like I said, this is really easy, you buy the cap, this whole thing was probably... Maybe ten dollars, a little bit less, a little maybe a, maybe a dollar or so more. I mean, they're not expensive. Now you could buy pollen sub feeders. They got that really nice blue one you could buy, and that holds a lot. Um, you could buy one of those, and you could put that out somewhere. And like I said, if there's no bees around it, they don't need it. Um, there are some people that think you don't need to feed your bees pollen sub. I do. Um, if they're obviously if they're all over it. And I feed the uh, Ultra Bee the really good stuff. It comes with a, I got, I got like what the five pound pail or the two pound pail, whatever that bucket is. It's about a foot tall. And that lasts a long time. If they're on it, they need it. That's, my, that's how I look at it anyway. So if the bees are all over the pollen sub, they're looking for something. If they're not on it, they're not touching it. And I will leave that up throughout the winter because what happens, you get a nice day. Generally in the winter, you won't see them on it too much. But if you get a nice, up here anyways, Northern Illinois, you get a nice winter day, the sun's out, it's warm. You come out here and there's bees all over that. They're, they're, they came out, they did their cleansing flight, and they're looking for something. So they'll be all over that pollen sub. It starts getting cold, they go back in. And if it's cold and snowy and crappy, a couple, three weeks, obviously you won't see them. But you get another nice warm day, boom, there they are, they're out again. They're all over it. Uh, it's kind of fun to watch them, actually. Especially when there's nothing to do with your bees up here anyways in the wintertime. So, and all I do when I make these is really simple. I use treated lumber, because treated lumber is obviously made for outdoors. I've got to cut, I forget how wide, I forget how long this is, but I got one piece 
I got I, I cut two pieces and then I take a piece of uh, all this is a piece of decking material you could use old scrap lumber you got laying around I'm just using the treated because it's outside the treated is made to be outside compared to straight pine which could rot after a while and I just take some find it this is actually deck board that I cut I had some I had some left over from building my deck and I just cut like a notch on my bandsaw I just cut a notch done fits right in there so let me show you really fast how I hang this up I just use like two inch shred I think these are two inch two and a quarter drywall screws and all I do and if you do this here's a piece of advice if you do use let's say deck board or any kind of thin board like just pre-drill your holes because when you go to screw those hook screws in there it's going to split it but if you pre-drill it then when it goes into this board here it won't crack it won't split this board but if you try and just drill right through this you're going to split this right now so just pre-drill it so the drill bit falls off now i think we have another drill bit i'll be right back i'm back you know i always say i'm going to paint these things red because when you're working out in the grass if it falls off you can never find the thing and now that i'm going to be done here i'll find it watch anyways back to the project never fails when you got something two seconds to do it takes like a half hour all right let's go back to this here now it's pretty straight there you can see it yeah i'm looking at the camera actually it's pretty straight now bit's still on so that's good watch i'll find that thing now sitting down here these drywall screws work great but even that one's a little bit loose after a while they sit out in the weather all right we're going to do this I've got these pre-drilled. I'm just starting it on either end just to make sure it's straight and then when I know it's right I'll drive them all the way in Make sure it pops in there first. There you go. That's it. See how nice that is? I just wanted to make sure that board was straight. Take it. There you go. That's all there is to it. When you want to take it out, pop it out. Simple, right? Let's do the other side. And I'm just going to make sure it's even with the other one, same height. Does it matter? No. I just hate looking at stuff that's crooked. There you go. Put the end pieces on and we're good to go.
Same thing, just get it in the middle here. Before I crank it all the way down, I'm gonna make sure it fits properly. There you go. Pops right in, no problem. So let's go ahead and Like I said, if you didn't pre-drill those holes, when you drill through this, because it's so thin, it'd split right in half. Ask me how I know. That's my famous word. Ask me how I know. That's how you learn when you're doing all this stuff. I figured I'd speak too soon, it would crack on me, but it didn't. Ask me how I know. That's how you learn. See how easy this thing is? About $11. All right. Boom, you're done. That's it. Fits right in there. You gotta take them out. And, yeah. Spider, I don't like spiders. Just pop right in really nice. That one's loose. I should take this one apart and tighten that one. I'm gonna pull this apart. I'm just gonna snug this one up. There we go. Don't fall off. I don't have any more. It's on the list now. When I go to when I go to my favorite store, you get a couple more of these bits. One thing that's nice about these, they're so easy to clean. You just pop the caps off and go. And I've had to take them off before. You know, some, I was, every once in a while, I'll throw a little bit of cracked corn, or some screenings. Screenings is, is, the, is the fine corn. When they clean the corn at the elevators, that falls onto the bottom, you can feed it the cattle. Um, but bees like it. And in the wintertime, I've experimented. I put screenings, cracked corn, in one of these and pound sub in the other. And they're just equally on both of them. Obviously they're getting more out of the pollen sub. The, the cracked corn they really don't get a whole lot out of. But they like it. They're all over it. They finish it right up. But the pollen sub is your main thing. I just did the cracked corn. See how they take it. Just for a treat, I guess. You know, it's winter time. There's nothing for them to do. They're stuck inside like we are when it's really cold. So it makes it really easy to pop these caps off uh, to clean these things out. Or when the birds get in there. Like I said, these make great birds nests. Although I'm really surprised there's none in there. So Anyways, that's it. My pollen sub feeders are done. I don't need to add. Six is plenty. Now there won't be any fighting. There really wasn't a whole lot of fighting even last year with the four of them, but now there's just, there's just plenty of room for the bees when they all come out. The more hives I get, the more bees I have. So I want to just have plenty of room. Um, so anyways, hopefully you like it. Hopefully you, I'll do a video. I will do a video on this. If you go back in my videos in the early spring where I keep my horse feed, You'll see when the bees are starting to look for stuff, they're all over that corn. The feed sits up next to one of the buildings. On a nice warm spring day, the bees are all over that. That means they're looking for something. And they're on the pollen substitute too, so. And it's funny, you could tell as things start to bloom, there's less and less bees on the horse feed. And then pretty soon when things start blooming, the bees are just gone on the horse feed. And they're gone on this too. And then they're out in nature getting their, their natural stuff. So anyways. Hopefully you like this idea. It's a cheap way to do it. You could hang them. I tried hanging them one time. 
I come out one morning, there's pollen stuff all over the ground. So I'm going to guess a coon got a hold of it because the whole thing was knocked all over the place. So a raccoon must have hit it, started knocking it around. There goes all your money laying on the ground. All that pollen stuff was wasted. So I came up with this idea just to hang them up. It's solid. Nothing can get at it. Even if the coons come wandering here at night, they can't mess with it. I have deer that come out of the woods. The, deers can't, the deer can't mess with it. They can mess with it when it's hanging. That could have done it too, actually. They'll come out of the woods looking for you know looking for food so this way they can't knock this down it's nice and solid a good easy cheap way to make a pollen sub feeder so hopefully you like the idea hey do me a favor like and subscribe hit the subscribe button i really appreciate it when you do subscribe hit the little bell next to that subscribe button a thumbs up is always appreciated it makes these videos pop up faster in searches and i will talk to you guys soon in the next video all right bye